So a woman by the name of Abby Johnson spoke at the RNC. This is her right here. Um, and it was about abortion. Now, she used to be a worker at Planned Parenthood. And she says, hey, I changed my mind because of what I saw when I was there. Now, I want to play for you part of the speech here. And I'm going to come back and tell you some falsehoods, some inconsistencies, and we'll talk about just the bigger picture as to why this is a main focus. The last thing I saw was a spine twirling around in the mother's womb before succumbing to the force of the suction. On October 6th, I left the clinic, looking back only to remember why I now advocate so passionately for life. I founded and currently run, and then there were none, a nonprofit organization that's helped nearly 600 abortion workers transition out of the industry. For most people who consider themselves pro-life, abortion is abstract. They can't even conceive of the barbarity. They don't know about the products of conception room and abortion clinics where infant corpses are pieced back together to ensure nothing remains in the mother's wombs or that we joked and called it the pieces of children room. You see, for me, abortion is real. I know what it sounds like. I, I know what abortion smells like. Did you know abortion even had a smell? I've been the perpetrator to these babies, to these women, and I now support President Trump because he has done more for the unborn than any other president. During his first month in office, he banned federal funds for global health groups that promote abortion. That same year, he overturned an Obama-Biden rule that allowed government subsidy of abortion. He appointed a record number of pro-life judges, including two Supreme Court justices. And importantly, he announced a new rule protecting the rights of health care workers objecting to abortion, many of whom I work with every day. So she was trending on Twitter because of a lot of the things she said. Now, some media outlets were like, wow, this is this is quite a story. So they did some digging and fact finding and... Apparently, according to medical records, so she tells a story of like, oh, I saw this abortion. It was at 13 weeks and it was terrible. And she gives these gruesome details. And according to the medical records, it was actually she, so she she's totally wrong about how old the fetus was. Apparently, it was younger than 10 weeks. And she keeps saying it was 13 weeks. Now, you might say, hey, that's a that's a minor difference. Not really. Not really. There's actually quite a big difference in terms of what developmental stage the fetus is at. Um, now, she also said in the speech that 80% of Planned Parenthoods are in minority communities. So she's making this argument that like, really, this is attempt to do genocide of people of color. And apparently fewer than 4% of Planned Parenthood facilities are actually in communities that are more than one third black. So j they're just misleading in that sense. Um, and then the other thing people found is that she has called for getting rid of one person, one vote. And she argues for household voting. So one household gets one vote. Now that's just nothing but a cutesy little dressed up way to say, take the vote away from women. Like, oh, if it's, if it's you know, a family, you got the husband, you got the wife, you got the kids... You get one vote. So really, it's like, hey, we really shouldn't have ever given women the right to vote. <laughs> so she has some very questionable things. The other thing, she apparently she has a mixed race kid and she once said that like, well, obviously he's more statistically predisposed to committing crimes. So the cops should, you know, will be more careful around him as he grows up. <laughs> what? <laughs> so... I, here's what I think is going on. Now, this is just speculation, but my guess is, guys, it's one of those things where she already had this very evangelical, fundamentalist Christian belief system, and she went into a job at a Planned Parenthood looking to do this whole 
heel turn at some point and be like, Oh, I used to be pro-abortion and now I'm anti-abortion. Believe me, I was there, I saw how gruesome it is, I saw how terrible it is. So in a way, I think she was like a mole. Like, I'm going to go into this thing knowing I'm already an evangelical fundamentalist Christian who's anti-abortion, I'm gonna pretend like I'm not that and then I'll have my whole story. It's almost like the Dave Rubin character arc of like, you know, me? Oh, I'm a lefty, bro. Oh, oh, the left is going crazy. Now I'm like the only sane liberal left, bro. That's me. And then eventually he was, you know, now he's just flat out seems like a conservative Republican. There's like a similar thing. Like she was going through the motions. I am a Planned Parenthood worker and I am a pro-choice lefty. Oh, let me. Oh, oh, this looks so gruesome. Oh, now I must leave and tell everybody my story and act like I had a change of heart. That's what I think is going on. Is it possible that that's not the case and that she was, you know, just a pro-choice lefty and changed her mind? I guess. But why all the inaccuracies in her speech? Why the incredibly fringe political views? It strikes me, uh, you know, a little too convenient that it all came together like that. And I don't believe a lot of what she says. Now, the real reason I'm talking about this is because, guys, I'm so sick of it. You cannot concern troll me about life. Life is so precious. We love life. Yeah. You can't do that. And also be in favor of the death penalty. And also be in favor of continuing all these wars. And also be against Medicare for all. You can't do it. You can't feign concern about life. And then say, I'm cool with the healthcare system that kills 45,000 to 60,000 Americans every single year because they don't have basic healthcare. So, here's my point. I'll care about your position on this when you show me you care about more than just fetuses. If you actually care about life, the first thing on the list would be ending the death penalty and ending wars. And then also Medicare for all. Because the fact that we don't have a single payer system is literally killing people. So you can't, I just can't take them seriously. Because they're on the wrong side of all those issues and then they turn around and act like they care so deeply about the lives of fetuses. It's just too ridiculous. And, and the, the extent that they go, like they do these emotional arguments where they talk about the gruesome details of it. And it's like, okay, well, I can go give a speech and talk about the gruesome details of war. I can talk about the gruesome details of somebody getting shot and killed and bleeding out on the battlefield as their loved ones are at home waiting for them to come back. I could do that to make the case against war, but I'd rather talk about it objectively from the macro level and not necessarily get into the granul granular details that, are, that will pull on your heartstrings because that's misleading when you do that. So, you know, it's it's just so ridiculous. These people pretend, I care so much about the babies. Yes, the babies. Let's also cut food stamps, which will in turn make it so kids don't have enough food to eat. So in that sense, fuck the babies. But in other ways, I love the babies. Yes, fetuses. <sighs> Guys, we're in the middle of a pandemic and a depression. And this was one of the things highlighted at the GOP convention. Highlighted. Highlighted. They were like, let's do the thing where we whine about abortion endlessly. As there's a pandemic and a depression, uh, you know, I think your finger's not quite on the pulse. <laughs>